and uh, let us focus our hearts and minds as we listen to our gathering music. Good morning again, and welcome everyone to worship today. Welcome to all of you here in the sanctuary. Welcome to, there was someone out there on the uh, patio, I don't know if they're out there now, but uh, welcome to those on the patio, and welcome to those who are joining us on Zoom from the sanctuaries of their home. We worship together as one community of faith. And today is the third Sunday after Pentecost in the church calendar. And today is also Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers among us today. And happy Father's Day to all father figures who are like a father to those in their lives. Now, during the, uh, the next 12 weeks, as we read through the middle chapters of the Gospel of Matthew, we are focusing on discipleship, that is, what it means to follow Jesus in our lives. What does Jesus teach us in word and deed about what it means to follow him today? Now, last week in our gospel reading, we saw Jesus interacting with a diverse group of people, from a tax collector to a leader of the synagogue. And this morning, we hear of Jesus sending out the disciples to do what he has done, 
That is, teach, proclaim, heal the sick, and raise the dead. Is this what we're called to do as well? We'll reflect on this in our sermon today. Family of faith, we are a community of connection, of growth, of hope. This is the place where all are welcome. God is near. Let us continue our worship with our gathering hymn, Rise Up, O Saints of God, and let us stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, amen. The congregation may be seated, and I'd like to invite children to come forward. And I see we have some online today. Hi, Sadie. Hi. Who, who is your friend with you today? Odette. Hi. A guest. Does your guest have a name? Odette. Odette. 
Odette, okay. Well, welcome, Odette. Good to see you. So, um, today I wanted to ask you two, um, what is, what's the special day today? What's special about today? It's Father's Day. Oh, you two are really good. Exactly. It's Father's Day. Now, Father's Day um, is a wonderful day, and fathers uh, do all kinds of things. Um, there's fathers, dads, our own dads, right? Um, there's also men in our lives who are like a father to us. It might be an uncle that is like a father or a friend who is like a father to us. Um, and fathers uh, can be teachers and all kinds of things, right? Yeah. So, um, and fathers do all kinds of things with us, right? Fathers might go camping with us. Um, fathers might get ice cream for us. Fathers might cook for us. Um, fathers uh, might teach us how to fish. Uh, and do all kinds of things, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. what kind of things um, do your fathers do with you two? Odette? Uh, he sometimes bakes with me oh. and we go on hikes. Oh, that's fantastic. Sometimes bakes and go on hikes. What about you, Sadie? Um, fishes with me. Um, um, helps me learn sailing stuff. Wow, that's great. So fishes with you and goes sailing with you? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, when my dad was alive, he passed away about 11 years ago, we used to play golf together, play ball together, look at cars together, um, do all kinds of things together. And of course, I miss my own father um, at this point. Um, but fathers are wonderful things in our lives, and we give thanks to God for our dads. And let us close with a word of prayer. Can you fold your hands and bow your head? And let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for dads. We thank you for fathers in our lives, and we thank you for others who are like fathers to us in our lives. But most of all, we thank you, God, for your love in our lives. In your name we pray, amen. So Odette, it was so nice to meet you today and nice to see you, Sadie. You two have a good week, okay? Okay, you too.
The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 19. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Today's second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter five. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still, sinner, while we were, still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Let us stand for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. For Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, 
cleansed the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you'll be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father is child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, we know that you are always speaking through strangers and friends, through random acts of kindness and feelings that stir hope awaken us. We know that you are always speaking, but we also know that we're inclined to miss it. Settle our spirits now to hear your word clearly. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Well, that was some gospel reading, wasn't it? I think I should have left out that last part. <laughs> well, Jesus begins by summarizing his ministry. It's about teaching and proclaiming the good news and curing every illness and disease. Then he diagnoses what he encounters in the crowds of people that seek after him. Matthew writes that Jesus had compassion for them because he sensed that they were harassed and helpless. Finally, Jesus commissions the disciples to go out and do what he has done, teach and proclaim the love of God and heal sicknesses. And then he goes on and on, giving them specific instructions for various situations that they may encounter. Wow, that's quite a tall order for those first followers, those first disciples of Jesus. And the question that arises in our minds is, is Jesus asking this of us, us 21st century disciples of Jesus. We're not expected to do that too, are we? Well, I'm afraid so. We, if we're the successors to the first disciples, which we are, and if we're to follow the ways of Christ, which we are, then we're to be about the business of curing diseases, casting out unclean spirits, and raising the dead. No matter how unlikely or unlike us, 
we think such behavior is. The question is not one of if, but one of how. How are we to go about the business of being Christian disciples and Christian healers in today's world? Well, I think the first step is to stop thinking that there's a significant difference between the first disciples and us. I think sometimes we believe and act as though those first followers were somehow special. They were extraordinary people with some kind of special connection to God. But they weren't. They were more like us than not like us. Which means they were wonderful and quirky and unique individuals like all of us. And they were uncertain and fallible and pro prone to messing up just like us. Look at Peter. He was an amazing person of faith, except when he wasn't. <laughs> Remember when he confidently stepped out of the boat, yet quickly succumbed to fear and started to sink? Yes, he helped the, start the church in Jerusalem after Pentecost. Yet it was only after he denied three times that he even knew Jesus. Or what about the brothers, James and John, the sons of thunder, the sons of Zebedee? Right after Jesus tells them that he's going to be crucified and die, the two are like, great, Jesus, then can we sit at your right and left hand in glory? In other words, they wanted to be number one and number one. Yet along with Peter, they too were important leaders in the early church. Go down that list of, of apostles, disciples. It's not an especially, especially extraordinary group. To tell you the truth, they're just a bunch of ordinary folks trying to live and make sense of their lives. And truth be told, so are we. The miracle of miracles is that God uses the ordinary and common to do extraordinary things. But we don't live in first century Palestine. So there's no need for us to go out door to door, barefoot and begging, anointing with oil and smiting folks on the forehead, shouting, out foul demon. Jesus said we had to do it, yes, but he didn't say anything about how to do it. Yes, we're called to proclaim the coming realm or kingdom of God in word and deed. Yet how we go about doing that is up to us. I believe curing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing lepers, and casting out demons are for us in this time and this place a call to have mercy and compassion. Today, it's not so much about miracles of healing and raising the dead as it is about expressions in our everyday lives, expressions of mercy and compassion upon the hurting and those in pain in the world and doing all in our power to relieve those hurts and those pains. And so we are called, as disciples of Jesus, to involve ourselves in any way we can, in the hurts and pains of the people of our communities, the people of Marin County and beyond. 
And when we do that, we do that with mercy and with compassion. Whether it's preparing food for the folks at Jonathan's place, or handing one of those small bags of food to a beautiful yet hungry human being on the side of the road. Or maybe it's being a compassionate presence for our friends or family members as they mourn the loss of a loved one. There are so many ways each and every day as many ways as there are people to minister to our neighbors in pain with mercy and compassion. This is our calling today as disciples of Jesus to meet people's pain and struggle with God's mercy and compassion. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the affirmation of faith printed in the bulletin and up on the screen. We believe in relationships. We believe in asking hard questions, in showing up for one another, and in sitting together through the pain. We believe in listening with grace, learning with curiosity, and apologizing with sincerity. We believe in asking for help, saying what we need, and trusting that no degree of vulnerability could strip us of God's love. We believe in trying our best and offering grace when our best is not enough. And we believe that God is in all relationships, modeling for us the value of community through the relationships of the Trinity. So today, today, and we strive to love even more tomorrow. Let it be so. Amen. Let us pray. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need.
For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news, bring healing where there is pain, and counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy, we bring our prayer to you. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy, we bring our prayer to you. For the days where the work of justice and reconciliation feels like too much, help lighten our load. Remind us all that there is always more to learn when it comes to making faith communities be spaces where all people can be truly welcomed, included, celebrated, and advocated for. Humble us in our shortcomings and soften our hearts to welcome people of all colors, sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. Let us never stop expanding the borders of love and acceptance for all your children. God, in your mercy, we bring our prayer to you. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who walk for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick, especially Ted Peters, Corneal Church, Annegret, Rose, Marie, and all those we name before you or hold silently in our hearts. Christy. Jamie. God, in your mercy, we bring our prayer to you. For those celebrating their baptismal anniversaries, especially Brian Houts, Christian Gable, Amelia Schunk and Josie Chan. Bless their lives and stir in their hearts passion for the ministry to which you have called them. God, in your mercy, we bring our prayer to you. For fathers and father figures, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. Bless all fathers whose hearts are filled with love, compassion, joy, faithfulness, and cover their lives with great peace. God, in your mercy, we bring our prayer to you. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Would you share that peace with one another? Peace, Betsy. Thank you for that beautiful song. Peace, peace, everyone. You may be seated. And we do have uh, a few announcements this morning before we continue. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Robert and Patricia for uh, their special music and accompanying our singing this morning. And I'd like to say, thank our choir members uh, for leading our singing, as well as Paul and Betsy and Jim for their uh, beautiful anthem today. Thank you. Oh, six. Oh, all of you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Goodness. Um, also, uh, just a word um, about an, a, bull, a bulletin announcement, adult education series. There are two changes to that adult education series uh, that I'd like to uh, draw your attention to, last minute changes that are not in the bulletin. It says Wednesdays, June 21st through July 12th, it is now because of a last minute change. Thursdays, beginning on June 29th, and going through July 20th. So still four uh, Thursday evenings, still at Shepherd of the Hills and still uh, from Jesus to Christ, the first Christians, and still 6.30 to 8 o'clock. 
so please take note of that change. And then I see something special at the back of the sanctuary. I um, wanted to say that um, also happy summer. The, this week, um, summer begins. And with summer, um, something very exciting at MLC happens. Um, it's, it has been gone for a few years, but it's back. And that is Vacation Bible School. And this year, we are on a roll, literally, because our theme is food truck um, party. And this morning, I have something really exciting, is that there was a little mini food truck that arrived this morning, just to get you guys all excited. And so um, there's a few treats. Um, there will be enough for everyone's going to enjoy Blanche's treats afterwards, but do enjoy the treats this morning. And um, most importantly, I just want you all to start spreading the word about VBS. Um, it will be August 7th through 11th, and it's from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And all children three years old to fifth grade are welcome. And we really encourage you to talk to your neighbors and your friends. And if you've got grandkids or kids in your household, please encourage them to um, come because it's a really fun week. Um, also, we always need extra hands. And so if you um, would like to help, we would love to hear from you. You can talk to Pastor or Bev or me or basically anybody around here. And um, there is an apron with your name on it. So um, please um, do that. Um, <laughs> Finally, I think that next week there's going to be another food truck coming to church. So you guys need to keep coming back to church and, and tell your friends. And um, next week it's going to be a different treat. So there you go. No, I'm, I can't speak with my mouth full. Well, that was, that was the best announcement, yes. Now we just have to sign up kids for Vacation Bible School. Are there other announcements? Hard to top that one, though. Let us prepare for Holy Communion, the second Holy Communion. Let us stand. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy
invite those at home to raise your piece of bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. For those at home, I invite you to eat of the bread of life. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For those at home, I invite you to drink of the cup of salvation. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Here at Marin Lutheran Church, everyone is welcome to come forward for Holy Communion. The usher will invite you to come, and you may kneel at the altar rail, and then you will receive a small piece of bread, and then a tray of small cups will go by with grape juice and wine. The wine is lighter in color. And then the, you may you put the empty cups in the basket at the end of the altar rail. Each and every one of us is invited to this table. Come and know Christ broken and poured out for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Hearts and voices raise, tell everyone what you done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name. Send us with your promises, O God, and lead us forth in joy. Thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of faith, may God grant you the wisdom to listen the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love, and the courage to be a disciple of Jesus, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. into the community with a daring and tender love. The world is waiting. Thanks be to God. <laughs>